Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici, I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. On this video we are covering CCNA cybersecurity operations and this is chapter 1, cybersecurity and the security operation center. Chapter 1 is divided in two sections. We have section 1.1, the danger, and the section 1.2, fighters in the war against cybercrime. Section 1.1, the danger. Upon completion of this section, you should be able to explain why networks and data are attacked, outline features of examples of security incidents, explain the motivation of threat actors behind specific security incidents, and explain the potential impact of network security attacks. The war stories hijacked people. Now, for example, if you go to a coffee shop, you do expect the coffee shop to offer a free internet access. Usually you would log in, you will see the coffee shop offer there and you select it and you log on and you access the internet. But what about if the rogue access point as some threat actor has put in a rogue access point with the same name as the coffee shop? You wouldn't be really be able to tell if you're not paying attention, you would connect the rogue access point because the rogue access point has a stronger signal than a normal access point or real access point. So you'll connect through the rogue access point and then the threat actor will get all the data they will, you will be using to access the internet. Like for example, what happened, uh, a person has connected like this, this was a real story, where um, the person was accessing the, web, the bank website and the hijacker hacked, uh, sorry, the hacker did hijack her session and gained access to her bank accounts. Another way is a ransom companies. For example, an employee of a major corporation did receive a, an email that did appear to come from the CEO containing an attached PDF. So when the PDF was opened, a ransomware was installed on the employee's computer and then it began gathering information as well as encry encrypting corporate data. The, the attacker hold the company's data for ransom until they are paid. And you'll get a message like this, similar to this. We had this a uh, few years ago in UK, uh, where the, there was a ransomware, they attacked hospitals. It made a big news because it did attack quite a few, few servers. Other, other stories is target nations. Uh, for example, today's malware is so sophisticated and expensive to create that security experts, they do believe only a nation state or group of nations that could possibly have the influence and funding to create it i.e. Stuxnet worm, it was designed to impede Iran's progress in enriching uranium. Now, threat actors, these are individuals or group of individuals who perform cyber attacks against another individual or organization. Now, cyber attacks are intentional malicious acts meant to negatively impact another individual or organization. Threat actors they do include, but they are not limited to amateurs, hacktivists, organized crime groups, state-sponsored, or terrorist groups. Now, amateurs, they're also known as the script kiddies. They have little or no knowledge on cyber attack. What they do often use existing tools or instruction, instructions found on the internet to launch the attack. Even though they are using basic tools, the result can still be devastating. Hacktivists, these are hackers who protest against a variety of political and social ideas. They're really not for the finance, financial gains, they are just protest against something. Hacktivists publicly protest against organization or governments by posting articles and videos, leaking sensitive information and disrupt, disrupting web services with illegitimate traffic in distributed denial of service DDoS attack. Financial gains? Well, much of the hacking activity that constantly threatens our security is motivated by financial gains. The cyber criminal want to get access to our bank account, personal data, and anything else that they can leverage to generate cash flow. Either to sell it to somebody else or hack it for themselves. Trade secrets and global politics. Now, in the past several years, have seen many stories about nation states hacking other countries or otherwise interfering with internal politics. Like for example, um, was the Trump saga, it just comes in my mind right away. 
um, there's quite a few. There's nations hacking another nation or interfering with internal politics. Nation states are also interested in using cyberspace for industrial espionage. The theft of intellectual property can give a country a significant advantage in international trade. How secure is Internet of Things? Now, you must have heard the term Internet of Things. This means that loads of devices are coming, uh, being part of the Internet now. For example, uh, from small devices like a doorbells camera or variable devices that track the fitness activities, they're all being connected. But the problem is, how secure are they? How it did, who wrote the firmware? Did the programmer pay attention to security flaws? Like for example, in 2016, not long ago, a uh, distributed denial of service attack against the domain name provider DIN took down many popular websites. And this was done by, using, by attacking from webcams, DVRs, routers and other Internet of Things devices that has been compromised by malicious software. These devices they did form a botnet that was controlled by hackers and we talk about botnet in the coming chapters. A botnet was used to create enormous denial of distributed denial of service attack that disabled essential internet access very quickly but this denial uh, distributed denial of service we're going to talk more in the upcoming chapters anyway but this is the attacker is going to connect uh, to uh, compromise servers and the servers are compromise other pcs and then we we issue attack from all these compromised pcs for example and that's called the distributed denial of service a single user really cannot do that much uh, well cannot do that much harm but distributed denial of service yes that's a bad thing PII and PHI. Now, PII, personally identifiable information, PII, is any information that can be used to positively identify an individual. For example, we have name, your social security number or national insurance number here in UK, birthday, credit card numbers, bank account numbers, government issued IDs, address information like street, email or phone number, all of these can be used to personally identify inf as a personal identifier information. And all the hackers, they really want to get access to this. And if they do get access to it, either they will use it for themselves or they can sell it. So you can trade it on the dark web. Now, dark web is where all cyber criminals, they do, they, they trade their activities. And this can be accessed only by social software, which we're going to be, again, learning a bit later. A subset of PII is protected health information, PHI, this is for medical information. The medical community creates and maintains electronic medical records, EMR, that contains a PHI. Lost competitive advantage. Companies are increasingly worried about corporate espionage in cyberspace. But there are also additional major concern is loss of trust when a company is unable to protect its customer personal data. For example, you're a subscriber to some company. Say, say you've got a subscription to PlayStation or PS Store or whatever, Xbox or whatever. And suddenly you hear that they, they've, been, they've been hacked and all of, it, all of the information is gone and they really cannot stop it. Now you're not going to be accessing them and then you're going to do everything you can to get to try and remove all your information from there. That's, that's going to be a very big big disadvantage for them the loss of competitive advantage may come from this loss of trust rather than another company or country stealing trade secrets politics and national security now it's not just businesses that do get hacked um, for example in 2016 february 2016 20,000 fbi employees hacker published their personal information as well as 9,000 u.s department of Homeland Security employees. This hacker was apparently politically motivated. The Stuxnet worm was specifically designed to impede Iran's progress in enriching uranium that could be used in nuclear weapon. We said this earlier. But Stuxnet is a prime example of a network attack motivated by national security concerns. Now, for example, controllers, similar to those attacked by Stuxnet, also are used to control the flow of water at dams and the switch of electricity on the power grid. Attacks on such controllers can have a dire consequences.
Thank you very much for watching the section 1.1, The Danger. Please have a look at my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. This has been Astrid Krasnichi. Next video, 1.2, Fighters in the War Against Cybercrime. Bye-bye.